So this time we're going to talk about Node.js. And as you know, uh, Node.js is completely based on the concept of callback. Um, to understand Node.js, we're going to break this section into three parts. We're going to talk a little bit regarding history, the whole history of JavaScript. Um, then we move more on to talk about the overall design of Node.js. And last we talk about Express, which is kind of a default standard of Node.js application. Even though it's not no longer that popular, but still kind of a number one most used framework if you talk about talk about Node.js. A little bit of history. So uh, as we know, a uh, long, long time ago, uh, web only has HTML, nothing to do with CSS and uh, JavaScript. And about some time ago, someone somebody saying, it's so boring, you know, we only have HTML, it's a document. It's a static document. It's not, it's not fluffy enough. So people add some JavaScript, some kind of uh, stuff to make the web website a bit more fancy. So you have an interaction going on, an animation going on. You do more stuff within a single, single page. And your code works in the browser. The JavaScript works in the browser. Like, why? Have you ever considered why your code just works in the browser? It makes no sense, right? How can your code work in the browser if you didn't do anything? Um, turn out to be that your code works in the browser because the browser has done a lot of great stuff for you. So the browser actually have a, a compiler, compiler. So it compile JavaScript code into machine code, into it's called a binary code. Then the machine is going to run those binary, binary code. The output is going to be show up by HTML. So the only reason you can see JavaScript running in your browser is because if they have some compiler running environment inside uh, your browser. Same thing like you, before you running any Java, Java application, you have to jump down the Java compiler. Use Java to compile Java code into uh, some kind of like runnable, ex executable uh, application, then run it. So that's the same idea regarding why JavaScript works in the browser. So uh, at the very beginning, JavaScript was not something significant. Some lot of uh, browsers do not support JavaScript because it's not very secure. It's kind of a, a toy language. Nobody really treat it seriously. But Google, as we know, uh, ran a big search engine on the <coughs> on the on, on the world. And if if they found if you can browse the internet faster, you are going to search more. So I think, uh, you know, the slow browser is really a big headache for our expansion. So how about we do some uh, do something much faster? So we launched Chrome, as you know, everybody using the Chrome now. And the Chrome has something called V8. The V8 is JavaScript compile engine, which is incredibly fast. Make some make yourself something useful. It's no longer you know it no longer take one second to do a one plus one calculation. It now takes a reasonable time, so you can do a lot more with JavaScript. So due to this V8 engine, uh, somebody built on this V8 engine and used the concept of callback to build this framework. And this framework is called uh, uh, Node.js. Look at some. Then we'll talk about some concept used in Node.js. The first thing we we'll talk about is event. So what is an event? Event is just an event. So when I open the door, it's an event. When I send a request to web server, it's an event. When you open an HTML page, it's an event. When you click on some button, it's an event. So by the way, when you go to smu.edu.sg, and you click on probably um, apply for undergraduate apply for venture, that's the event. We to do the fire event to our server. And the server is going to respond to that. The second is uh, second thing is callback. The callback thing is the same uh, thing as JavaScript. So if, when something happens, something else happens. So the load yes, design is roughly following. So when user go to page A, do sense A. When user go to page B, do sense B. And probably we should translate to more sophisticated stuff like uh, when user go to facebook.com dot slash dot facebook.com dot, dot com slash news feeds, you're going to display all your friends' news feeds. If you're going to facebook.com slash user, then your user ID, you're going to your own profile page, you're going to show you all your profile. And if you're going to facebook.com dot user slash your friend's ID, you're probably going to show your friend's ID. So this is based on the callback. You ask the brother, you do something, and the brother responds to you with something. The concept of callback. So uh, the brother is basically react to your action. Then we will talk about endless loop. So um, the endless loop is a loop which 
didn't end. So no back, no JSS uh, spawn, spawn this loop, create this loop. It's constantly uh, checking new events. So it will do new events whenever new event happen or whenever something finish. Like uh, you read something, you read you read something from database, or you read something to the database, and the database has successfully saved your data. Um, then the event loop. So apply the endless loop concept with the event. We combine them together, we have the event loop, which is going constantly running big circle and checking stuff. So see a graphical imprint imprint regarding no guess. Uh, I didn't create this image, it was created by I think the uh, author of Node.js trying to when he trying to explain Node.js to other people. So basically, what JS means, you have a request from the user side. So the user going to send a request like, uh, I want to see how much for this product, how much is the product. I want to know about, more about this category. I want to know, um, can I make a friend with this person? Stuff like that. So we're going to send a request towards your single thread event. It's a single loop, but it's just going to run and run and run forever. Then, your event loop probably going to do something uh, very lag because as we know CPU and RAM is very, very fast but desk, hard desk or, or some drive is quite slow so the concept of this event loop is you register some callback to your database saying uh, would you mind save this data like say one gig of data and when you're done would you mind tell me when you're done um, in, instead of waiting for your saving to be done, you basically kind of uh, move away from the waiting time, but use more resource to deal with other coming requests. For example, uh, in the past, you may want to say, uh, for the if you're going to upload a photo into Facebook, and the Facebook cannot hang just because you are going to upload the Facebook photo. It must put your process into the background and continue to react to more other users' reaction. So, and the only way your photo is kind of finished uploading, Facebook, Facebook is going to tell you, okay, your photo has been uploaded already, would you, might, would you like to post that or not? No stuff like that. And as, it, as this uh, diagram shows, when your <coughs> kind of intense operation get done in the back end, in the back, back, back process, we're going to call this callback. We're going to reject the callback there. And you call this callback when your operation complete. I'm going to trigger this um, callback inside of Node.js. And this callback basically sends a response back to user. The whole process would be something like this. The user sends a HTTP get request towards facebook.com slash. The loop register this request. Send the reject callback to your database to fetch all the news feeds from your friends. And you're going to put this process in the background for a while. And when this process finish, it probably take uh, half a second. And the operation complete, the event is going to come, uh, come finish and the uh, data will be load, probably in a JSON format. And this JSON will be, will be here, uh, here. And this JSON data will be passed back from the response callback. So the response basically saying, mm, Okay, so when you finish, I will take this data and send back to the user. So you only get the uh, res response when the server has finished. Okay, uh, everybody comfortable with this concept regarding the endless loop? Just keep looping and react to a user reaction. Any question? Issues? No. Parts you say not clear enough? Okay, okay, sure. So then I'll talk slightly about Express. So Express is uh, fast, I don't think that minimums is web format for Node.js, at least they claim so. Uh, so because Node.js is still pretty low level stuff, you need to deal with all HTTP requests, the kind of every single detail of yourself. So it's kind of a very inconvenient, it's not very productive. So people read this framework called Node.js, <laughs> sorry, called Express. They help you build the application very, very fast and very, very clean. So we'll be looking at some sample code regarding what's, uh, how do you uh, write Express. We're not going to talk a lot about Express in this module. Uh, in this course, because we can talk something a little bit more highly integrated. Express was uh, coming, but not that coming in, 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 
think I'm, so we just do go through this code line by line and try to understanding, try to understand what is going on here. So now we're trying to create a new variable. It's called express. And we, we, we come across a function called require. And this function is taking one parameter, which is the one library called express. We're going to find the library probably by name. The name is express. And call the library. And that library is kind of a, a modular. So when you call the modular, you get everything back from the lab. Then, as you can see, the, lab, the express itself is a kind of a, a, like a function. So you get back, 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 back this function, you're going to call this function, the second one. And when you call this function, you actually get a web application. I mean, that's it. That's the web application. That's the black page web application you get. And uh, uh, before I proceed, everyone knows what is HTTP request, right? Get, post, update, delete, right? Everyone knows, right? Everybody knows that, right? We need to go through again. What we get is basically getting stuff. Post, which basically means creating some stuff. Update, basically means update some stuff. Delete, which basically means you want to delete something. So that's the HTTP request to a language methods. So here, we're saying, app dot get slash app dot get slash basically means whenever people visit your home page so what's the home page home page is your, is your root page for facebook is www.facebook.com slash nothing behind for smu is smu.edu slash gd slash nothing behind so that's the home page so it says whenever user visit your home page i'm going to run that function, later function. That function is a is a value. So you're passing a value to deal with anything, any action towards your home page. So this this function taking two parameters. The first one is request, basically saying uh, the request sent from user. The second parameter is a response, basically basically uh, trying to um, trying to allow you to respond to user. Once you have done your data, data collection or something like that, so we can see here the page, the response. The, this function doesn't really do anything with re requests, but it sends back a response. So we say res, res which is short for response. The send, send is a method. I'm passing a string as a parameter called hello world. So basically, all this is going to do. And you send user back a response, a pure string is called, uh, the string is hello world. And what you're going to see is on your browser, you're going to see hello world. As simple, simple as that. Then go down. Uh, we now we have this app. We need to kind of uh, get this app, app up and running. We need to expose our app to, to the web. to the web. So make sure people can visit us at a certain part. As we know, your web application need to be open at a certain port for people to visit you. So normally, HTTP requests are open at 80. So when you tap www.google.com, you are actually tapping www.google.com column 80. The only reason you, you don't need to tap that every time is because 80 is the default HTTP um, port. So it, the browser kind of uh, think, oh, you're going to visit this port, and uh, you, don't need to, you don't need to tap that yourself. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create a new variable. You know, the name of our variable is called server. And how we're going to do it, we're going to use the app we just created from the express function call. We're going to say, listen to port 3000. You can listen to any port, like 8000, 9000, or 666, whatever. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, once you establish that connection, establish that listening, run the following and the following function, which is kind of the second parameter. So what this function is going to do is, let's see, uh, first it create a variable called host. Then you use this server to get an address of this server. You run a function. And this function probably going to return you an object. And you set an object, you probably have an address property. I'm not saying, uh, uh, I know this, this is true, but I'm saying you know, when you read this line of code, 
you, this is, should be what is going on in your head. You read or server, then dot address, oh, that should be a function, or oh, I think that's the calling function, dot, uh, then dot address. Probably, probably that's, that's a pro property. Then port, var port, server dot address dot port. Mm, maybe, you know, address is the kind of a module uh, where you can get information like port, address, and stuff like other stuff like that. Then finally, we're going to lock console lock. Uh, example app is missing at port. And host post and uh, this is a string formatting. So and this console log is not no longer going to log out your browser. As we just said before, the only reason code works in the browser is because Chrome has a read it engine, right? So that's the reason you can use console log. So now the way it's running on your server, on your backend, when you do console log, it's going to run, it's going to output in your terminal. So if you are Windows, it's probably in your command line. If you are on Mac, it's on your terminal. If you are Linux, it's um, maybe TDY1 or TDY3, something like that. So this is the basic concept regarding uh, Node.js. No I'm not going to touch too deep on that. And if you are very interested, you can go to noteschool.io. It's a very, a very good place to learn a lot of stuff. They run excellent programs. Highly recommend.